what do you think you are doing? You already look like an elephant and now you want to eat more? At this time, really? Dara felt the humiliation wash over her. She had tolerated Jimmy's cruel words at home. But this public humiliation in front of BC and Taiwo was too much to bear. In the lively and colorful kingdom of Oyo, located in the western parts of Nigeria, there lived two young girls named Darasimi and Bisola. The villagers often called them Dara and Bisi, which were shorter and easier names to say. Dara and Bisi were not just any two girls. They were the best of friends, but their friendship had a unique beginning that started in their secondary school days. Dara had spent a few years living with her uncle in Lagos. Sadly, when he passed, Dara moved back to her village to live with her parents again. Her parents enrolled her in the local school, the same one bc attended dara and bc were in the same class but quickly dara noticed something different about bc bc was always quiet and kept to herself the other children in the class would laugh and make fun of her all the time bc wore a uniform that looked old and tattered her shoes were worn out and her hair was never neatly done. She sat in the corner of the classroom, looking frightened and alone, and this made Dara feel sad. Dara didn't like how everyone treated BC because of how she looked, and she didn't like how BC seemed to be scared and quiet all the time. Dara felt that BC needed a friend. And she decided that she would be that friend. One sunny afternoon, during lunch break, Dara gathered her courage and walked over to where Bisi was sitting alone. She smiled and greeted, Hello, Bisi. Can I sit with you? Bisi looked up, surprised. Was Dara really talking to her? She wondered if she had heard correctly, so she stayed quiet, waiting for Dara to speak again. Dara repeated her question politely. Can I sit with you? This time, Bisi nodded shyly. No one in their class had ever tried to be nice to her before. She had always admired Dara from a distance. Dara was beautiful and smart, always answering questions confidently in class. But now, she was discovering something new about her. Dara was also very kind. What's wrong with you? Dara asked, noticing that Bisi seemed lost in her thoughts. I've been talking to you, but you haven't answered. I'm sorry, BC stammered. I didn't hear you. Dara could sense BC was nervous. Look, you don't have to be afraid of me. I come as a friend, she said gently. I was just wondering if you would like to share my lunch with me. At the mention of food, BC's stomach rumbled loudly. She felt embarrassed. She had only eaten a little bit of leftover amala that morning, and she was still very hungry. But she remembered what her parents always told her, to never accept things from strangers. Could Dara really be trusted? Maybe Dara was sent by her classmates to poison her, so they could get rid of her. Thank you, PC finally replied. Her voice, barely a whisper, but I'm fine. Dara looked at her closely, sensing her fear. 
she could tell Bisi was hungry. It's okay if you don't want to eat my lunch, Dara said kindly. I have some money with me. I can buy you some snacks if you would like. Bisi hesitated for a moment, then nodded slowly and accepted the money Dara offered. She thanked Dara softly, feeling a warmth she hadn't felt in a long time. And from that small act of kindness, a beautiful friendship began to blossom between Dara and Bisi. Bisi's parents were poor traders who struggled to make ends meet. They had many mouths to feed at home, but not enough food to go around. They could hardly afford new clothes, a new school uniform, or even a simple pair of shoes for BC. Thankfully, the village school was free, so both rich and poor children could attend. This was how BC managed to go to school even though her family was so poor. Dara's family was different. Her parents were cocoa farmers and they were doing quite well. While they weren't very rich, they could afford all the basic things they needed. Dara's family always had enough food on the table and they dressed nicely. Dara even had the chance to help out on the farm during weekends where she would earn a little money for herself. Dara could see how sad and embarrassed Bisi felt because of her own worn-out clothes and old shoes. She wanted her friends to feel happy and confident, and she had an idea that might help. Dara decided to use her savings to buy Bisi a new pair of school uniform and shoes she thought that if Bessie had new clothes, their classmates would stop making fun of her. Dara wanted to surprise Bessie, so she didn't tell her about the plan. Since they were both the same size, Dara was sure that everything would fit perfectly. One Saturday evening, Dara went to visit Bessie. She carried a package wrapped neatly in a bag. Bessie had no idea what was about to happen. When Dara took out the new uniform and shoes, Bessie's eyes widened with surprise and she screamed with excitement. She hugged Dara tightly, tears of joy streaming down her cheeks. You don't know what you've just done for me, Bessie kept saying, overwhelmed with gratitude. Thank you so much. Dara hugged her friend even tighter. We are friends, she whispered. I can't just sit and watch you be bullied or mocked by anyone. I will do all I can to help you. Dara's voice was filled with emotion and she couldn't help but remember how busy would always sit so quietly in class, looking so cold and scared. After that heartfelt moment, Bissy called her parents over. They were so thankful to Dara for her kindness. They blessed her, praying that she would always have help when she needed it. Afterward, the two girls sat under a big tree in front of Bissy's hut. Dara knew how to braid hair, so she started braiding Bissy's hair with gentle fingers as they chatted happily, laughing and sharing their thoughts. When Dara finished, Bissy looked into the mirror and couldn't believe her eyes. Her hair looked beautiful and she felt like a brand new person. She smiled widely, feeling so grateful to have a friend like Dara. No, Dara was more than a friend, she was now like a sister who came into her life when she needed it most. On Monday morning, the air was fresh and filled with excitement as Dara and Bisi walked hand in hand to school. They moved quickly, 
their hearts light and filled with joy. Bisi felt like a brand new person in her smart new uniform and shiny shoes. It was as if magic had swept over her. When they arrived at school, nobody could believe their eyes. Their classmates stared in shock, their mouths hanging open. Was this really the same Bisi, the girl who used to look so tattered and warm? now appeared stunning, her uniform crisp and her hair neatly braided. Bisi saw all the surprised faces and for the first time in a long time, she smiled a bright happy smile. She looked at Dara and gave her a playful wink, her heart overflowing with joy. From that day on, the bowling stopped completely. No one dared to mock Bisi anymore. And she no longer felt small and invincible. The friendship between the two girls blossomed like a flower in spring. They were always seen together, inseparable, as they walked through the village. Whether it was fetching water from the stream or running little errands, Dara and Bisi were always laughing and chatting sharing stories and jokes. Their bond grew stronger with each passing day and soon they became so close that they shared all their secrets. They would always come to each other's defense, protecting one another like sisters. Everyone in the village admired the friendship they shared. And both Dara and Bisi felt like nothing could ever break their special bond. Every weekend, Bisi would join Dara on the cuckoo farm. The work wasn't easy, but together they made it fun. At the end of each day, whatever money they earned, they shared equally. Dara also began giving Bisi some of her own clothes, making sure she always looked her best. On Sundays, they would sit together under the shade of a thatched roof and Dara would help Bisi with her schoolwork. Dara was much better at school and she was determined to help Bisi succeed. We will always have each other, Dara would say, smiling warmly at Bisi. Bisi would smile back shyly but her heart was full of gratitude for such a wonderful friend. As time went on, Bisi's confidence returned. She no longer felt like the quiet, scared girl sitting in the corner of the class. Instead, she held her head high and walked proudly, knowing she had a friend like Dara by her side. Together, the two girls were unstoppable, and they were happier than they had ever been. Years passed, and soon Dara and Bisi sat for their senior WIAC exams. Both of them studied hard, and when the results came out, they couldn't believe their eyes. They had passed with flying colors. They were so proud of themselves jumping up and down in excitement. They danced, laughed and celebrated, imagining all the wonderful things the future had in store for them. Their hearts were filled with joy as they talked about their dreams of going to the city, attending university and becoming successful businesswomen. The future looked bright and full of endless possibilities. But suddenly, Bisi stopped celebrating. She grew quiet and sat down, her face clouded with sadness. Dara noticed right away. She stared at her friend, confused by the sudden change in mood. What's wrong, Bisi? Why do you look so sad? She asked gently. Tears began to roll down Bisi's cheeks. She wiped them away. But more kept coming. My father, Bisi's voice trembled as she spoke. 
He said, I have to stay in the village and help sell in the market. He says, we don't have the money for me to go to school. I have to wait until someone asks for my hand in marriage. Dara's heart sank. She had always imagined that she and BC would move to the city together. They had talked so many times about becoming roommates, studying business administration and one day running their own businesses. It had been their shared dream for as long as Dara could remember. But now, that dream was slipping away. Dara felt a lump in her throat as she realized that she might have to go to the city alone without her best friend by her side. She moved closer to BC and wrapped her arms around her. Please, don't cry, BC, Dara whispered, trying to comfort her friend. I wish I could help, but I don't have enough money either. But we can't give up. We can't give up on hope. I believe things will work out. Somehow, we just have to keep believing. BC hugged Dara tightly, her tears soaking Dara's shoulder. She knew there was nothing either of them could do to change the situation. Her family was too poor to send her to school, and it wasn't Dara's fault. Still, the weight of her disappointment felt heavy in her chest. She took a deep breath, trying to calm herself and decided she would have to be strong. A few weeks later, the time came for Dara to leave the village. The two friends sat under their favorite tree, crying together. Dara was going to the city to pursue her dreams, and it broke their hearts to think about being apart. Neither of them could imagine what life would be without the order. I'm going to miss you so much, BC, Dara said through her sobs. I don't know what I'll do without you. BC took Dara's hand and squeezed them tightly. I already miss you, she said softly. You've been like a sister to me, but don't worry, we will stay in touch. I will write letter and I will visit the village whenever I can, Dara promised. And who knows, maybe something will happen, a miracle, and you will be able to join me in the city one day. We just have to believe. Even though Dara had no idea how such a miracle would come to pass, she didn't want to lose hope. Bisi nodded, her heart aching. But she felt a little comforted by Dara's words. They hugged each other tightly, neither of them wanting to let go. As the sun began to set and the sky turned orange, Bissy walked Dara home, both girls holding hands as if they could stop time. Before parting, they made a promise to never forget each other, no matter what happened. And as Dara left the village the next morning, both she and BC knew that even though they were apart, their friendship would remain in their hearts forever. Life in the city felt so different without BC. Every day, Dara found herself thinking about her best friend, wishing she was there with her. Whether Dara was walking to her classes, sitting in the library or just passing by the busy streets. BC was always on her mind. Dara felt sad when she remembered the day BC had cried, feeling hopeless because her parents didn't have enough money to send her to school. Dara wished more than anything that there was a way for BC to join her in the city. She dreamed of them being together both of them studying and working towards a bright future. Back in the village, things were not going well for Bisi. She had fallen into depression, feeling like all her dreams 
were sleeping away. Men had started coming to her house, asking her parents for her hand in marriage, but Busy had turned them all down. She didn't want to get married so young. She still wanted to go to school and make something of herself. Whenever Busy sat alone, her thoughts would drift to Dara. Dara is in the city, going to school and soon will become a graduate, Busy will think with a heavy heart. But I'm here, stuck in the village. One day, I might even be forced to marry a farmer. The thought of that made her chest tighten with sadness, and she didn't know how she could ever escape this fate. Then, one afternoon, something wonderful happened. Dara was leaving the admin block at her school when she noticed a sign on the notice board. It caught her eye and she walked over to read it. The sign was an advertisement for part-time students. It said that students who couldn't afford to be in school full-time would work and study at the same time. Dara's heart leaped with excitement. Busy immediately came to mind and she couldn't wait to share the news. This was the answer they had been looking for. Busy could come to the city after all. She could get a job and attend school part-time. It wasn't the perfect solution, but it was a start and Dara knew it was the chance Busy needed. She made a promise to herself that she would support Busy in any way she could. She didn't have much, but she was willing to share what she had to support her best friend. She imagined how happy Busy would be when she heard the news, and she couldn't wait to tell her. When Dara finally told Busy, her guess was right. Busy couldn't stop dancing with joy. For so long, Busy had felt trapped falling into depression but now there was hope now she had a chance to leave the village and go to the city she didn't care how many jobs she would have to take on or how hard it might be she was ready to work as hard as it took to make her dream come true this was her opportunity to say goodbye to the village and start a new life and she wasn't going to let it slip away. A few weeks later, Bisi was finally on her way to the city to join her best friend, Dara. She had never left Oya before, so everything she saw on the journey amazed her. Her eyes sparkled with excitement as she looked out of the window, watching the tall buildings, the wide, smooth roads, and all the busy people. The city was so different from the quiet village she had grown up in, and she couldn't wait to experience it all. When the boss arrived at the park, Bessie's heart skipped with joy. There, waiting for her with open arms, was Dara. The two friends ran to each other, hugging tightly, laughing and feeling like they had never been apart. It had been so long since they last saw each other and both were so happy to be reunited. They couldn't stop talking, even as they got on the public bus that would take them to Dara's lodge. There was so much to catch up on, so many stories to share. BC and Dara kept chatting and laughing, eager to fill in all the gaps they had missed while being apart. When they finally arrived at Dara's lodge, Bissy's smile grew even wider. It wasn't a big place, but it was neat, cozy, and just perfect for Dara. As Dara helped Bissy settle in, they shared a simple dinner together, still talking and giggling between bites. Bissy looked around feeling a sense of comfort and excitement. 
she knew that this was the beginning of a bright future for her. She was finally in the city with her best friend and nothing could be better. Six years passed and the two girls had grown into beautiful, confident maidens. They had both finished their education and were now working in the city. Bisi had found a job at a restaurant when she first arrived. And even after finishing school, she continued working there as she had not been able to get a better opportunity. Dara, on the other hand, was lucky. She had landed a great job at a big company in Lagos and she was earning a good salary. Her career seemed to be taking off. The two friends still lived together, just like sisters, sharing their lives, their dreams and their hopes. But even though everything seemed perfect on the outside, something wasn't right. BC was no longer as happy as she used to be. A growing sadness weighed on her heart. She couldn't help but feel like Dara was the lucky one. Why she was always left behind. It was as if Dara always got the best of everything and BC was just there taking the leftover. She remembered the day they both applied for jobs at Dara's company. That was before Dara got the job. They had seen the advert online and with excitement, both of them filled out their applications. But when the interview dates came, only Dara received an invitation. Dara went on to secure the job with a good position and great pay. Why BC remained at the restaurant, still waiting for her big break. This wasn't the only thing that bothered BC. Whenever they went out together, all the compliments were showered on Dara. People would say how beautiful and smart Dara was, while BC felt invincible, standing quietly in the background. No one seemed to notice her. And that made her feel even more left out. BC started to wonder if she was unlucky. Why did everything seem to be working out for Dara? And why do everyone seem to think that Dara was better than her? Why did Dara get all the opportunities while she struggled? These thoughts swelled in BC's mind and as much as she loved her friend, she couldn't help but feel a deep sadness wondering if things would ever change for her. Dara couldn't help but notice that something was wrong with BC. Her friend wasn't acting like herself anymore and Dara was getting really worried. BC had become distant and quiet, a far cry from the lively and happy person Dara always knew. Whenever Dara asked BC to go out with her, like they used to, BC would come up with one excuse after the other. Sometimes she would say she was too tired. Other times she would pretend she had something else to do. Dara couldn't understand why her best friend seemed to be pulling away. It wasn't just the excuses. Even when they were together, BC seemed different. During their conversations, she was distant, as if her mind was somewhere else. Dara would talk and talk, but Bisi barely responded. She seemed angry or upset most of the time, and the negative energy around her was just too much to ignore. Dara had tried her best to figure out what was going on. She asked Bisi multiple times if something was wrong at work or if she was having any personal problems. But every time, Bisi would say no insisting that everything was fine. Yet, Dara knew deep down that something was bothering her friend. This strange behavior from BC weighed heavily on Dara's heart. She thought about how much she had done for BC over the years. When BC had first moved to the city, Dara had supported her in every way she could. She had taken on small jobs 
just to help Bisi pay for her part-time studies. And even now, Dara was paying most of the rent because Bisi's income from the restaurant wasn't enough. Dara didn't mind helping her friend. She had always been happy to do it. But now, Bisi's coldness and anger were hurtful and Dara didn't understand why. One day, Dara couldn't take it anymore. She decided that she needed to confront BC once and for all. What had she done wrong? Why was BC treating her this way? She had always been there for BC, but now it felt like BC was shutting her out. Dara approached BC gently but firmly. BC, we need to talk. Tell me what's going on, she asked. Why are you acting this way? If I have done something to upset you, why don't you just tell me? I've always tried to help you, but now it feels like you are angry with me all the time. Bissy looked at Dara, but instead of opening up, she simply shook her head. I'm fine, she said. I'm okay, and nothing is wrong, she repeated over and over. Dara's heart sank. She had hoped that Bisi would finally tell her what was going on, but instead she was met with silence. Bisi wouldn't talk and it hurt Dara deeply. She felt like she had done everything she could to be a good friend, but it still wasn't enough. Dara was sad, but she knew she had tried her best. After the confrontation with Dara, Bisi realized that her friend was deeply unhappy, and this made her feel a little guilty. She knew that Dara had been trying her best to help her, and she didn't want to continue making things worse between them. That is, if she could help it. So, even though she still wasn't completely happy inside, Bisi decided to put on a cheerful face and make an effort to reconnect with Dara. One sunny afternoon, as Dara sat in the living room lost in a novel, Bisi approached her with a smile. The weather is perfect for a day at the beach, Bisi said, her voice filled with excitement. What do you think? Dara looked up from her book and saw the excitement in Bisi's eyes. It warmed her heart to see her friend finally acting more like her old self. Smiling, she replied, You know, I was thinking the same thing earlier. Why don't we go for it? The two friends giggled like they used to, rushing off to change into their beach outfits. It felt like the tension between them was melting away, and for the first time in a while, things seemed normal again. When they arrived at the beach, it was just as beautiful as they had hoped. The cool water felt refreshing against their sun-heated skin as they splashed and laughed, just like the good old days. They talked about everything and nothing, enjoying each other's company without any of the awkwardness that had come between them for weeks. Then, out of nowhere, Dara spotted something, or rather someone that made her eyes widen. Oh my goodness, BC! Dara exclaimed, her finger pointing towards two young men who were walking towards them, laughing loudly. Look at those two. BC followed Dara's gaze and her jaw nearly dropped. Wow, she whispered. The one on the left is my speck. He is so handsome. She couldn't stop staring at him. Dara chuckled and nodded. I agree, but the other one isn't bad either. As the men got closer, Dara and Bisi quickly looked away, pretending not to have been staring. They didn't want to seem too interested. That was their unwritten girl's code. But much to their surprise, the men didn't walk past them. Instead, they stopped right in front of them. Hello, ladies, one of them greeted, his eyes 
twinkling with admiration. Hello, Dara and Bisi replied casually, trying to act as if they weren't impressed, though both could feel the excitement bubbling inside. The men clearly were not ones to give up easily. They sat down in the sand next to them and struck up a conversation. Bisi couldn't help but think to herself, these men must be rich. Just look at their skin, so fresh and glowing. And they were using the latest iPhones too. I'm definitely not letting them slip away. She joined in the conversation, laughing at their jokes and hoping to catch the attention of the one she had her eyes on. His name was Jimmy, and he was the man on the left, the one she had admired from the moment she saw him. But to her dismay, Jimmy seemed more interested in Dara. His eyes were on Dara throughout their chats, while the other man Taiwo seemed more focused on Bisi. The problem was, Bisi didn't like Taiwo. She wanted Jimmy and it frustrated her that he wasn't paying attention to her. As the day at the beach went on, the four of them had a great time. They laughed, chatted and even went horse riding together. The fun made the time fly by, and soon it was time to leave. The two men introduced themselves properly as Taiwo and Jimmy. And when it was time to head home, Jimmy asked, Can we drop you off or did you come with your car? before Dara could politely refuse, saying they could find their way home. BC quickly jumped in. No, we don't have a car and we will be happy to have you take us home, she said eagerly, flashing a smile. Jimmy smiled back. And soon, the four of them were on their way. There was heavy traffic, but no one seemed to mind. The ride was filled with jokes laughter and playful conversation, making the time pass quickly. When they finally arrived at Dara and Bisi's apartment, Jimmy asked Dara for her phone number while Taiwo took Bisi's. As they exchanged numbers, Bisi's heart sank and her smile faded. She had spent the entire afternoon trying to win Jimmy's attention, but in the end, he asked for Dara's number instead. Boiling with anger inside, Bisi couldn't understand why it always had to be Dara. A romantic relationship quickly blossomed between the two pairs. Jimmy and Taiwo were truly smitten by Dara and Bisi. The girls were different from the typical Lagos girls the men had encountered. They were down to earth kind and beautiful, and both Jimmy and Taiwo wanted more than just a casual fling. They wanted something real, lasting and meaningful. Every night, Jimmy would call Dara and they would talk for hours laughing and sharing stories. It was the same with Bisi and Taiwo, even though deep down Bisi still had feelings for Jimmy. Jimmy owned one of the biggest companies in the city. He and Taiwo had been best friends since childhood, growing up together like brothers. They loved each other dearly and their bond was unbreakable. Taiwo worked as a manager in Jimmy's company and they had always supported each other, both in business and in life. But knowing that Taiwo worked for Jimmy only made Bisi angrier. It felt like a cruel twist of fate. Jimmy should have been mine, she thought bitterly, whenever she was alone. I liked him first. I should have been the one by his side, not Dara. These thoughts swelled in her mind constantly, and it became harder and harder for her to hide her frustration. Dara, being the happy and caring friend she had always been, would often share her joy with Bisi. She would talk about her romantic moments with Jimmy, the sweet text messages, the thoughtful gifts, the fun dates. 
Dara thought she was simply sharing her happiness with her best friend. But BC never responded the way Dara expected. Instead of joining in the excitement, BC would remain silent or say something to try and dampen Dara's joy. Men like Jimmy don't stick around. BC would say coldly, Guys like him just use girls and move on. I mean, Taiwo is understandable, but Jimmy is filthy rich and he doesn't date girls like us. These careless words pierced Dara's heart. It hurt her deeply that BC would say such things about Jimmy, especially since Jimmy had been nothing but kind, not only to Dara but also to BC. He always treated them both with respect and generosity. Dara couldn't understand why BC was acting this way, but she decided to stop sharing her relationship details with her. After all, BC never talked about her own relationship with Taiwo, so maybe it was best to keep her own matters private as well. Despite BC's strange behavior, Dara's relationship with Jimmy continued to flourish. It was filled with love, laughter, and plenty gifts. Jimmy spoiled Dara with thoughtful presents, and they enjoyed each other's company more and more as time went on. Taiwo also treated BC well, but no matter what he did, it never seemed to be enough for her. Every time Dara received a gift from Jimmy, BC couldn't help but compare. She felt that Dara's gifts were always more expensive and it fueled her resentment. BC's heart was slowly filling with hatred, not just for Dara but also for her own situation. She felt like she was stuck in the shadow of her best friend. And every time Jimmy came over to visit or took Dara out, it felt like a sharp knife cutting through her. She couldn't stand watching Dara live the life she had dreamed of for herself. Dara, on the other hand, had no idea why BC was acting this way. She noticed the unpleasantness in BC's attitude, but she didn't know how to fix it. Bissy had grown distant and bitter, but Dara chose to ignore her. She still treated Bissy like her own sister, hoping that one day, things would go back to the way they used to be. Even though Bissy's behavior hurt her, Dara refused to give up on their friendship. She had always been loyal to Bissy, and she wasn't about to let the tension ruin what they had. But as Bissy's jealousy and anger grew, it seemed like the bond they once shared was becoming harder and harder to hold on to. One evening, after a long day at work, Dara and Bisi were at home, each keeping to herself, as had become the usual for them lately. They barely talked much anymore, and the silence between them had grown thick. Suddenly, a sleek limousine pulled into their compound, making both girls glance outside in surprise. Before they knew it, two mates were at their door, holding two shopping bags. Dara, who had gotten up to answer the door, was handed the bags. She noticed that one of the bags had her name on it and the other was for BC. Confused, she opened the bags and found beautiful dresses inside along with a note that said, dress up and meet us for dinner. There's a car waiting outside. Dara called out to BC and the two friends stood there puzzled and curious. What were Jimmy and Taiwo up to? Neither of them had expected this surprise and as they got ready, they couldn't stop wondering what the evening had in store for them. They dressed in their elegant gowns from the bags, each girl admiring how beautiful the other looked. Though there was still an awkward silence between them, the limousine driver was waiting outside and once they were ready, they climbed into the car, their hearts raising with excitement and curiosity. The car took them to a breathtaking restaurant 
one of the finest they had ever seen. The moment they stepped out, they were greeted by a scene straight out of a fairy tale. The restaurant was decorated with glowing lights, colorful balloons and fresh flowers that filled the air with a sweet fragrance. Soft music played in the background, making the atmosphere feel magical. As they walked inside, Dara and PC spotted Jimmy and Taiwo standing near a beautifully set table, both dressed in stunning suits, their smiles beaming with excitement. Dara's heart thudded in her chest as she walked towards Jimmy, while BC felt the same as she approached Taiwo. The girls couldn't help but wonder what this elaborate setup was for. The men seemed more nervous than usual, which made the girls even more curious. Then, to their complete shock, Jimmy and Taiwo both dropped to one knee at the same time, each holding out a sparkling ring. The girls gasped in surprise, their hands flying to their mouths. They couldn't believe what was happening. Tears welled up in Dara's eyes as Jimmy smiled up at her, and Busy stood frozen for a moment, her heart pounding wildly. Then, both of them threw themselves into their men's arms, shouting, yes, over and over again. It was a magical moment. Taiwo and Jimmy had chosen the same day to propose to their best friends. Two best friends getting engaged to two best friends. It felt like a dream come true. After the emotional proposal, they all sat down to enjoy a delicious dinner. Laughter and excitement filled the air as they talked about their future, the wedding plans and how perfect the evening had been. But even in this moment of happiness, PC couldn't help but let her eyes wander to Dara's engagement ring. It sparkled more than hers and in her heart, she felt a growing bitterness. This has to be a pure diamond ring, PC thought to herself. As much as she tried to smile and act happy, a storm of anger and jealousy was brewing inside her. They continued to laugh and chat about the wedding and the men shared that they wanted to have a joint wedding on the same day. Tara smiled warmly at the idea, but Bisi's smile felt forced. Inside, she was fuming. Why did Dara always seem to get the best things? Even in this perfect moment, BC couldn't escape the feeling of being second best. Dara, on the other hand, noticed the tension but couldn't quite understand what was going on with BC. Her best friend seemed like a stranger now, but Dara didn't want to dwell on it much. She liked the idea of a joint wedding and hoped it would bring them closer again. But deep down, she knew that something had changed between them. Months had passed since Dara and Busy had both gotten married. And although they had a beautiful joint wedding, it didn't change the growing distance between them. Now, they each lived in their own houses with their husbands, but the bond that once connected them had faded. The men Jimmy and Taiwo still maintained a strong and healthy friendship, as they always had done. Every weekend, they would take turns visiting each other's home, enjoying Sunday evenings filled with laughter, wine, and a good barbecue. The men would laugh, joke, and reminisce while the women sat quietly like strangers. Dara and Busy always put on forced smiles, pretending everything was fine, but deep down, they knew that something wasn't right. One evening, Busy and Taiwo were visiting Jimmy and Dara's mansion. As they arrived, Busy's eyes immediately landed on a brand new car parked in the driveway. Her heart skipped a bit. It was one of the latest models, a car she had always dreamed of owning. Unable to hold back her curiosity, she decided to ask, Wow, Taiwo, who owns this car? Did Jimmy get a new car? Taiwo smiled, not thinking much of it. Oh yes, he did, but it's for his wife. At that moment, everything spoiled. Something inside busy snapped. 
Her cheerful mood vanished and she spent the rest of the evening sulking. She barely touched her dinner, her mind raising with thoughts of envy. When Taiwan noticed her unease and asked what was wrong, Bissi lied, saying she wasn't feeling well and wanted to go home. Concerned, but not wanting to spoil the evening, Taiwo said, All right, you can go ahead. I will join you later. I still want to spend some time with Jimmy. Dara, always hoping to fix things between them, offered gently. Can I keep you company instead, Bissi? But Bissi's anger boiled over and she snapped. No! Her voice was sharp and filled with irritation. Everyone in the room noticed the tension. Taiwo, sensing the uncomfortable atmosphere, stood up immediately. I will go with you, he said, taking Bissi's hand and leading her home. The next morning, just as the sun was rising, Bissi woke Taiwo up. I need to talk to you, she said, her voice firm. Taiwo groaned, still half asleep. Can't it wait? He asked, rubbing his eyes. No, it can't, Bissy replied, her tone leaving no room for delay. Sitting up, Taiwo looked at her with concern. What is it? He asked. I want a new car, Bissy stated bluntly. And I want it to be bigger and better than Dara's new car. Taiwo blinked in shock. But I just bought you a car, he said, clearly surprised by her demand. Dara has two cars and I only have one, Bissy cried, her frustration spilling out. Why does she always get the best of everything? Why does she have to have more than me? Taiwo sighed and pulled her closer, trying to calm her down. BC, you have to stop comparing yourself to Dara. Her husband is rich. Jimmy is filthy rich. We are not like them. We can't afford to live the way they do. BC's eyes flashed with anger. Then why don't you ask him for more? Tell Jimmy to give you a loan. Start your own business. Be your own boss. You've worked for him for years. Taiwo. You should be owning part of that company by now. Don't you see? How long are you going to keep working for him like a servant? Taiwo's patience snapped. Will you stop it, busy? he thundered. Jimmy and I have been friends since childhood. We've been through so much together. He pays me so well. And thanks to him, I have a good life. My parents were poor. But Jimmy never looked down on me. He helped me become who I am today, and I'm grateful for that. I can't buy you that car. Not now, and maybe not for a while. Fuming, Taiwo lay back down, trying to calm himself. He closed his eyes, but his mind was spinning. Was marrying Bissy a mistake? He loved her deeply, but her constant rivalry with Dara was eating away at their happiness. He didn't understand why Bissy was never satisfied with what they had. All he wanted was peace, but Bissy's jealousy was tearing them apart. Bissy, on the other hand, lay beside him, her anger only growing stronger. She wasn't going to accept being second to Dara. Not now, not ever. She stared at the ceiling thinking about how unfair everything seemed. Taiwo might not be ready to fight for more, but she wasn't ready to settle for less. The tension between them was palpable, and the silence in the room echoed their growing distance. Months passed quickly, and soon, BC and Dara became pregnant and had their first children. Life should have been filled with joy and excitement, but things began to change, especially for Dara. As a new mother, Dara gained a lot of weight. Her body changed as she nursed her baby. And the extra weight just won't go away. On the other hand, Bissy remained slim and looked as if she hadn't even had a child. Dara's husband, Jimmy, noticed this difference and it began to bother him deeply. 
Jimmy had always liked slim women and it was one of the things that had attracted him to Dara in the first place. He hadn't expected that she would gain so much weight after having a baby. At first, he kept his thoughts to himself, hoping that Dara's body would eventually go back to how it was before. But instead of losing weight, Dara continued to gain more. Jimmy grew increasingly unhappy, and whenever they sat together with Taiwo and BC, Jimmy couldn't help but stare at BC. He couldn't stop thinking, how is it that BC looks so slim and youthful after having a baby, while Dara had put on so much weight? This comparison frustrated him even more. By the time Dara had their second child, her body size expanded even more and Jimmy's patience finally ran out. He could no longer hide his disappointment. Whenever Dara sat down to eat, Jimmy would glare at her with disgust. Look at you. See how you eat like an elephant, he would say harshly. And the worst part is that you just keep exploding like an ape. The first time Dara heard this cruel word, it broke her heart. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she silently pushed her plate away, even though she was still breastfeeding and needed the food for her baby. But the hurtful comments didn't stop. Jimmy constantly criticized her body, and Dara began to feel insecure. She was tired. She tried to eat less, sometimes even starving herself for hours, hoping to lose weight. But no matter what she did, Nothing seemed to change. Jimmy even started comparing her to Bissy, saying, Just look at your friend Bissy. She has two kids and she still looks amazing. But you, you've just let yourself go, blowing up and looking so ugly and more unattractive. Dara couldn't believe that this was the same Jimmy she had fallen in love with. The kind, gentle man she once knew had turned into someone who hurt her with his words every day. She began to withdraw into herself, sitting quietly, feeling more and more depressed. She wanted to lose weight badly, but as a breastfeeding mother, there were limits to what she could do. One evening, they were invited over to Taiwo's house for dinner. As usual, Jimmy couldn't stop raising busy. Slim bullets he would call out whenever Bisi came into the room to serve food. Taiwo, your wife looks amazing. Two kids and she still looks this good. Does she even eat at all? He joked. But Dara could see that it wasn't a joke. Taiwo smiled politely. He wasn't comfortable with the conversation, especially when he saw the sad expression on Dara's face. But Jimmy didn't stop. He kept praising BC, making her feel special. And BC, instead of defending her friend, smiled and flirted right back, clearly enjoying the attention. This hurt Dara deeply. She couldn't understand how BC could stand there and smile while her husband mocked her in front of everyone. Then, the final blow came. As Dara picked up her fork to eat, Jimmy snapped at her, his voice filled with anger. What do you think you are doing? You already look like an elephant and now you want to eat more? At this time, really? Dara felt the humiliation wash over her. She had tolerated Jimmy's cruel words at home. But this public humiliation in front of BC and Taiwo was too much to bear. Tears filled her eyes as she stood up from the table and walked out of the house without saying a word. Her heart ached not only from Jimmy's hurtful words but from Bissy's silence. Bissy, the friend she has once been so close to, didn't say a single word in her defense. Bissy didn't stand up for her, didn't tell Jimmy to stop. As Dara walked home, tears streaming down her face, she wondered what hurt her more, 
Was it Jimmy's sudden change in character or Bissy's coldness? She knew that she and Bissy weren't as close as they used to be anymore, but she had still expected some level of loyalty. Some sign that Bissy cared, but there was nothing. Bissy had sat there enjoying Jimmy's attention while Dara's heart was breaking right in front of her. Things only got worse for Dara as the months went by. Jimmy no longer wanted her to attend corporate dinners or events with him. She would watch from the sidelines as Ty would proudly took Bissy along while Jimmy left Dara at home. He stopped being loving, stopped touching her, and started keeping late nights, coming home at odd hours. The emotional and verbal abuse became unbearable. Dara felt completely shattered and it was clear that Jimmy was having an affair. The realization broke her heart and she began blaming herself. It's because I'm too fat, she thought, trying to make excuses for Jimmy's actions. He wasn't like this before. She hated the way she now looked and felt trapped in her own body. Jimmy had even stopped giving her pocket money or any money for personal upkeeps. Dara wasn't working because Jimmy had asked her to stay home to care for the family. So now she was completely broke. She had no money on her own, no independence and no way to support herself. One day, feeling desperate, she decided to swallow her pride and ask Bissy for help. She wanted to know how Bissy managed to keep her slim figure after two children, hoping it might give her some answers. But when Dara approached Bissy, she wasn't prepared for what happened next. Bissy started laughing. So you are upset because your husband calls you fat? Bissy asked with a smirk. You shouldn't even bother Dara. What did you expect? That you'd stay slim like me? Look at your mother now. Is she not fat? And so is your father. It's in your genes. You will just keep getting fatter and fatter. So it's better you accept it. You are full of fat, Dara. And there is nothing you can do to change it. Dara stood there speechless, feeling the sting of Bissy's words. As for me, Bissy continued, I don't do anything to stay slim. I'm just naturally like this. She paused, looking Dara up and down with disdain. But honestly, I don't blame your husband. Have you looked at yourself lately? You don't look good at all. Dara didn't respond. She just stared at Bissy, feeling a wave of sadness and betrayal wash over her. She had loved Bissy like a sister stood up for her when others bullied her in school and treated her with so much care and now Bissy was treating her with such cruelty as dara walked back home she felt even worse than before she regretted ever going to Bissy for help it only deepened her pain at home dara had once mentioned to jimmy that she wanted to join a gym to try and lose weight she thought that maybe with exercise, she could regain her confidence and start feeling better about herself. But Jimmy shut down the idea immediately. I'm not wasting my money on that, he said coldly. You were born to expand like an elephant and nothing will change that. Dara's life was becoming more miserable by the day. She felt trapped, unloved and lost. One afternoon, while she was tidying up Jimmy's room, his phone buzzed with a notification. He had gone downstairs to collect something, leaving behind his phone. Lately, she had noticed him staying up at night, messaging someone, and it made her wonder what he was up to. Curious, she picked up his phone. To her relief, he hadn't changed his password. When she opened his WhatsApp, her heart dropped at what she saw. Jimmy was having an affair with Bissy. Dara scrolled through the message in disbelief. There were pictures 
of her that Jimmy had secretly taken and sent to Bisi. In one message, Jimmy had written, Can you imagine the ape I'm living with? I'm really going through a lot. Hot tears streamed down Dara's face as she dropped the phone, unable to process the betrayer. Her best friend and her husband had both turned against her. Dara rushed downstairs, her heart heavy with pain and anger. She cried bitterly, wondering what she had done to deserve this. She had been a good wife, a loyal friend, and yet both BC and Jimmy had betrayed her in the worst possible way. She needed to talk to someone, to find some comfort, or she would lose her mind. Scrolling quickly through her contacts, one person came to mind. Chiwi, her chief bridesmaid. Chiwi had been her classmate in school, and although they weren't as close as she and Bisi, she remembered that Chiwi had always been a kind and supportive friend. With shaky hands, Dara dialed Chiwi's number. Chiwi answered on the first ring, her voice cheerful and warm. Dara, it's been so long. How are you? But Chinwe quickly sensed something was wrong. Dara, are you crying? What's the matter? Is everything okay with you? No, it's not, Dara sobbed, unable to hold back her tears. She poured out everything she had been going through. Jimmy's emotional abuse, the affair with BC, and how broken she felt inside. Chinwe listened patiently, her heart aching for her friend. Oh, Dara, I'm so sorry you've been going through this, Chinwe said gently. You don't deserve any of it. Listen, you need to stay strong. Don't let Jimmy see that you know what he's up to. Not yet. As for BC, Kama will catch up with that bitch. When Tyro finds out, she will regret betraying you. In the meantime, I'm going to send you some money so you can register for those gym sessions. Start exercising and take care of yourself. Also, ensure you eat right. Jimmy will realize he made a big mistake and he will regret ever treating you this way. You are a good woman, Dara, and don't let anyone make you think otherwise. Chinwe's word brought a sense of comfort to Dara. But the pain of betrayal still weighed heavily on her heart. She knew she had a long road ahead, but with Chinwe's support, she felt a glimmer of hope, even in the midst of her darkest moment. Dara decided to take Chinwe's advice seriously. She started going to the gym and committed to exercising daily. Every morning, she would put on her workout clothes and head out, determined to focus on herself for once. Chinwe had told her to stay away from anything that brought negative energy, so Dara began ignoring Jimmy completely, as well as whatever he was doing with BC or anyone else. She realized that she couldn't control what others did, but she could control how she reacted. She had two beautiful children who needed her love and attention, and she decided to surround herself with only things that made her happy. On Sunday evenings, when the families usually gathered for dinner, Dara stopped attending. She couldn't bear to sit at the same table with Jimmy and Bissy anymore. It hurt too much, and she didn't want to keep pretending that everything was fine. Instead, she spent her evenings doing things that brought her peace, like reading, spending time with her kids, or enjoying a quiet walk. Jimmy began to notice this sudden change in Dara's behavior. She no longer sulked around the house looking sad or defeated. Instead, she seemed more cheerful, more at peace, and Jimmy couldn't help but wonder what was going on. What's gotten into her, he thought. Dara had always been soft and quiet, but now she was different. She wasn't the same woman who used to cry over his harsh words. Then came the final surprise. Dara had quietly applied for jobs and soon she got hired for a new position. When Jimmy found out, he was furious. 
One evening, he confronted her. I told you I didn't want you working anymore, he shouted angrily. By this time, Dara didn't back down. She stood her ground, her eyes filled with fierce determination. You have no right to tell me what I can or can't do anymore, she fired back. You've lost that right. And I'm going to do what's best for me and my children. Do you really think I'm going to sit here and remain your puppet, always begging you for money and depending on you? No more, Jimmy. I've had enough. Jimmy was stunned. He had never seen this side of Dara before. Her voice was strong, her words fierce, and the fire in her eyes scared him. This wasn't the quiet, easygoing woman he had married. This was someone else. Someone stronger and he didn't know how to handle it. He clenched his fist, trying to regain control. This is my house, he yelled, his face red with anger. If you don't want to listen to me, then get out. Take your fat self and leave. But Dara didn't flinch. She looked him straight in the eye and said calmly, I will leave, but I will do it when I decide to, not when you tell me to. With that, she pushed past him and walked into her room, leaving Jimmy standing there, shocked and speechless. He couldn't believe what had just happened. The woman he thought was weak had stood up to him and for the first time, Jimmy realized that he might have lost her for good. Months passed and Dara's life began to change for the better. She committed to her gym workouts and daily exercise. And the results were showing. She had lost a significant amount of weight and with it, her confidence was coming back. Chimwe, her loyal friend, had been a constant source of support, always encouraging her and standing by her side through every step of her journey. One day, after a particularly good workout, Dara was leaving the gym. When a handsome young man approached her, his name was Tolu, and although Dara wasn't interested in anyone at the time, she was still healing from the pain Jimmy had caused her. Tolu didn't push. He was gentle, polite and didn't try to force anything. Every day at the gym, he would casually join her, starting friendly conversations. Over time, the two of them became close friends. Tolu admired Dara a lot. He was a single dad, having lost his wife after the birth of their first child. So he understood pain and loss. When Dara shared her story with him, he felt a deep sadness for her. He admired her strength and the way she was working on rebuilding her life. Soon, it became a routine. Tolu would pick Dara up every morning to go to the gym together. And on some evenings, they would go out for dinner. He brought joy into Dara's life and for the first time in a long while, she started to feel happy again. Meanwhile, Jimmy couldn't help but notice the changes in Dara. She had slimmed down and her beauty was shining even brighter. Her energy was different. She was no longer sad and withdrawn. Instead, she seemed very happy, vibrant and full of life. Jimmy saw it, but he didn't know how to approach her anymore. Every morning, he would watch as Tolu picked Dara up for the gym and in the evenings, he saw them go out together. Jealousy burned through him like a fire he couldn't control. Dara is still my wife, he would think to himself. He wanted her back, but he didn't know how to make things right. Desperate to win her over again, Jimmy began trying everything he could think of. He started preparing dinner for her, buying her flowers and attempting to engage in small conversations. But Dara wouldn't give him the time of the day. She was distant, completely uninterested in his efforts. She would sit on the sofa, talking on the phone for hours, laughing and enjoying herself, while Jimmy would hide nearby, if dropping on the conversation, trying to figure out who she was talking to. Dara was looking more beautiful than ever, and Jimmy couldn't stand the idea of losing her to another man. One day, unable to contain his jealousy any longer, 
Jimmy confronted Dara. Who is that man that's always with you? He demanded angrily. I see him picking you up every morning and you're going out with him at night. Who is he? Dara looked at Jimmy coldly. It's none of your business, she replied, her voice calm but firm. It's my business, Jimmy shouted. You are still my wife and I won't tolerate cheating. At this, Dara's anger fled. How dare you talk to me about cheating, she snapped, her eyes blazing with fury. Did I question you when I found out you were sleeping with my best friend? Did I ask you anything when I heard you were cheating with BC? You are a pathetic animal, Jimmy. And sometimes, I wonder how I ever fell in love with you. I wonder what your best friend will think of you when he finds out you've been sleeping with his wife. Jimmy froze, his face pale. How did she know? He hadn't expected Dara to find out, but somehow she knew everything and had kept it all this time. His heart raced as panic stepped in. This marriage is over, Jimmy, Dara said, her voice steady and final. I'm done with you for good. She stormed out of the room, leaving Jimmy standing there, stunned and speechless. At that very moment, Taiwo, who had been standing outside Jimmy's door, heard everything. He couldn't believe his ears. His legs felt too heavy. As he made his way back home, the weight of the truth crashing down on him. Jimmy had been having an affair with BC. No wonder things had felt strange lately. The expensive car Jimmy had gifted BC. The awkward moments. Everything suddenly made sense. How could he have been so stupid? Tears welled up in Taiwo's eyes as he thought about how good he had been to BC. He had loved her, provided for her and never suspected she would betray him in such a way. When Taiwo arrived home, BC was panicking. He had just found out she was pregnant with Jimmy's child and everything felt like it was falling apart. She didn't know what to do. When Taiwo walked into the house, she could see the pain in his eyes. He didn't say a word, but she could feel his anger and confusion. He looked at her, his mind racing with thoughts of betrayal. He felt like grabbing her, demanding answers or strangling her to death. But instead, he couldn't face her. He picked up his car keys and left the house, heading to a bar, trying to make sense of the mess his life had become. BC, left alone, was filled with fear. She knew that Tai was suspected something and she was terrified of what would happen next. Just two days earlier, Jimmy had told her that it was over between them. He had said he wanted to work things out with Dara and that their affair needed to end. Busy had been left with nothing, but she couldn't lose both men in her life. She and Jimmy had agreed that she would have an abortion to hide the pregnancy. And as soon as Taiwo left, she felt a bit of relief. She made arrangements to meet Jimmy and together they headed to the hospital to carry out the secret abortion. But on their way, something went terribly wrong. The car swerved off the road and crashed into a ghastly accident. BC died instantly. In a tragic moment, all the lies, betrayal and deceit came to a devastating end. Jimmy was rushed to the hospital immediately after the accident. His injuries were severe and he was in coma for days. Dara was contacted. And along with his parents, they rushed to the hospital, anxious and scared about what had happened to him. His legs were badly damaged, and the doctors did everything they could to save him. But when Jimmy finally regained consciousness, he was faced with a heartbreaking reality. He could no longer feel his legs. The doctors confirmed his worst fear. He would be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. This news shattered Jimmy. His once strong and confident self now felt weak and hopeless. 
He couldn't believe this was happening. Everything in his life seemed to be falling apart. He had lost control and now even his body had failed him. Taiwo, on the other hand, was furious. Despite losing his wife, his anger towards Jimmy hadn't faded. He had once considered Jimmy his best friend and family. But now, all he could feel was betrayal. He had even resigned from his job at Jimmy's company, unable to bear the thought of working for the man who had destroyed his life. He refused to visit Jimmy in the hospital, unwilling to look at him. The pain of what had happened was too deep, and he felt like he had been stabbed in the back by someone he had trusted completely. When Bisi died, Taiwo's anger didn't soften. In fact, it only grew stronger. He refused to allow her to be buried on any of his properties. Instead, Bisi's family took her back to the village to bury her. Taiwo's heart was filled with so much bitterness that he swore never to forgive Bisi, not in his life and not even in death. Marrying her, he thought, had been the biggest mistake of his life. Meanwhile, Jimmy was slowly sinking into depression. His entire life felt like it was crumbling around him. Every day, he replayed the events in his head, wondering where everything had gone so wrong. He was now alone, wheelchair-bound and filled with regret. His wife Dara wanted nothing to do with him anymore. She had filed for divorce, making it clear that she didn't care what happened to him. Jimmy, desperate and broken, begged Dara to stay. He apologized for everything he had done, tears streaming down his face as he pleaded with her. But Dara had no sympathy left for him. Her heart had been broken too many times, and she was no longer willing to forgive. You are a very wicked and selfish man, Jimmy, she said bitterly. After all you did to me, you expect me to stay and take care of you? You are so pathetic. You can go wake your slim mistress from the dead to look after you, she hissed. Her words were sharp and filled with pain, and Jimmy knew he had caused his predicament. As for Bisi, Dara felt no pity for her. BC had shown herself to be that one wasted friend that she had spent almost half of her life pulling up. But she was never going to allow that ingrate stop her from being kind to others. There are still good people like Chinwe and Tolu. All she needed to do was to learn how to be very careful and not just allow people into her life just like that out of sympathy. With no choice left, Jimmy let Dara go. She took her children and left the house, leaving Jimmy to face his new reality alone. Now crippled and filled with regret, Jimmy's life had completely changed. He couldn't help but wish he had done things differently. He wished he had been a better husband, a better father, and a better man. But now, it was all too late. The damage had been done, and there was no going back. Nothing would ever be the same. Tara's friendship with Olu continued to grow beautifully, like a flower blooming after a long winter. Every moment spent with him felt like a breath of fresh air, and Tara often found herself wishing she had met Tolu before she ever crossed paths with Jimmy. Tolu was everything she had hoped for in a partner. Soft-spoken, calm and incredibly caring. He had a way of looking at her that made her feel like the most beautiful woman in the world. He would often tell her, you are very beautiful, my dear, and you are the most beautiful woman my eyes will ever behold. Dara loved hearing those words, not because of the compliment itself, but because she knew he truly meant them. Tolu had shown her how to stand up for herself, to never let anyone make her feel less than she deserved. When Dara first met him, she was still broken, her confidence shattered by the hurt and betrayal Jimmy had caused. 
but with Chinwe and Tolu's support, Dara slowly began to put the pieces of her life back together. Tolu had been a guiding light, helping her rediscover her strength, her worth, and her beauty. He wasn't just a friend, he was a treasure in her life. Tolu, a successful medical doctor who owned a large hospital, was doing well for himself. Despite his busy career, he always made time for Dara. They spent hours together laughing, talking about everything, and going on fun dates. It felt easy and natural, as though they had known each other forever. Their children got along so well too, and it wasn't long before both families felt like one. The kids bonded effortlessly, treating each other with love, warmth and respect, which made Dara's heart swell with joy. Although, Dara and Tolu still labelled their relationship as just friends. Deep down, they both knew that what they shared was much more than that. There was something special between them, something deep and meaningful. Tolu wasn't just a friend to Dara. He was a person who filled her life with a kind of happiness she had never imagined she could feel again. For Tolu, Dara was a light that brought joy back into his world. He admired her strength, her grace and the way she loved with all her heart. Tolu wanted nothing more than to spend the rest of his life with Dara. He dreamed of making her the happiest woman on earth of building a future together filled with love and laughter, but he knew he had to be patient. Dara had asked for time, time to heal from the pain of her past, to fully recover from the hurts Jimmy had caused, and Tolu was willing to wait. He knew that when the time was right, Dara would be able to love him completely, just as he loved her. Until then, he would continue to be by her side supporting her in every way, cherishing the beautiful connection they shared. Hey besties, thank you for watching this amazing story and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. I would like you to drop your lessons in the comment section so that others can read and learn from it. Also, if you are yet to subscribe to my channel, please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification bell so that you get notified whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much for your support, your kind words and everything you do. They mean so much to me and I do not take them for granted. Right now, I'll have to go and see you in our next story. Bye!